In this lesson, we're going to have a look at how to sketch a cubic function. The standard form for a cubic equation is y is equal to ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. This graph can have a maximum of two stationary points and always has one inflection point. If the a value is bigger than zero or positive, the form of the graph will have two options. The graph can have two stationary points and will then look something like this, or it can have only one stationary point which will then also be the inflection point. The important thing to realize is when a is positive, you always start bottom left and you move to the top right. When the a value is smaller than zero or negative, and the graph has two stationary points, it will look something like this. And if it has only one stationary point, the form will be like this. Here it is important to realize if a is negative, you will always start top left and make your way down to the bottom right. Just like with any other function that you sketch, it's important to indicate your x and y intercepts. And here it's also important to show your stationary point and your inflection point. Example 1. Sketch the graph of f. For this cubic function, I'm going to start off determining the y-intercept. And for any function, we do this by changing the x values to 0. So the y-intercept here has a coordinate of 0, 3. Next, we can determine the x-intercept. And for this, we change the y-value to 0 and factorize. If you need to remind yourself how to factorize this equation, have a look at lesson 2 again, factorizing cubic polynomials. So now we have our x-intercepts at minus 1, 0. And the second one is at 3, 0. And next we can determine our stationary points by taking the derivative and putting it equal to 0. This can be factorized and then we have two x values for our stationary points. And if we substitute these x values into our original function, we will calculate the y values that fit these x values. And then we have our two stationary coordinates. And finally, we need to determine the inflection point. And the inflection point is determined by taking the second derivative and putting it equal to 0. Here we can then go and solve x and we'll see that x is a third. To determine the y value that fits this x value, we substitute a third into the original function. And then we have our coordinate for the inflection point. All that's left to do now is put all these coordinates together with the correct form and sketch the graph. For this, we need to notice that the a value is negative, and this means the form will be from the top left to the bottom right. When drawing, I prefer to plot my x-intercepts along with my stationary points first. So I'm going to start off with my x-intercept, which is also a stationary point, at minus 1. And then my next x-intercept is at 3. And my second stationary point or turning point is then at 5 over 3. So because my a value is negative, I'm starting top left, moving to my x-intercept, which is a turning point, through the y-intercept to the next turning point, to the next x-intercept, and completing my graph. Now I still need to go and indicate my y-intercept at 3 and also my inflection point which is at a third. In example 2 we are once again asked to draw the graph of a cubic function and I'm going to start with my y-intercept again. So when I now go and substitute the x values with 0 you will notice that the y-intercept is always the constant value at the end, so I can actually immediately write down the coordinate 0, 1. Next, I'm going to determine the x-intercepts by changing y to 0 and factorizing. In the end, there will only be one x-intercept at minus 1, 0. 
Now we can go and determine our stationary points by getting the derivative and putting it equal to zero. And when you now factorize, you will see that the stationary point is also at minus one, zero. As soon as a cubic function has only one stationary point, the stationary point will also be the inflection point. So the following steps are not necessary. When sketching this graph, it is important to realize that A is positive and therefore we're going to start bottom left and move to the top right. And in this case, we only have two coordinates to indicate. We have our y-intercept at 1 and we have our x-intercept, which is also a stationary inflection point at minus 1. So on minus 1 on my x-axis and 1 on my y-axis, I'm going to plot my two points. Then drawing my graph from bottom left going through the inflection point and the y-intercept ending top right corner.